Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics and lot of ortho topics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out daily MCQs with which you can brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the hip joint pathologies. This video will be about the femoroacetabular impingement that is FAI and also we will be talking about labral pathologies. So let's start with this topic. Under femoroacetabular impingement, we can divide this topic into two parts that is the cam impingement and the pincer impingement. Cam impingement is also called as the pistol grip deformity. Over here what happens is your femoral neck which is there, it fails to taper as it merges with the head of the femur. Okay. Whereas in pincer impingement what happens, it is also called as the coxa profunda deformity where the acetabulum which is formed over here is too deep. So we will study about both of these in detail. So going to the cam impingement also known as the pistol grip deformity because it's like a grip of a pistol right this shaft of the femur and then this over here the neck and the head creating a pistol grip so that's why it is called as the pistol grip deformity over here because the femoral neck does not taper down there is poor clearance which causes anterior superior region of the labrum to get impinged over here so the important point over here is the anterior superior labrum gets impinged because of the failure in tapering of the femoral neck correct what are the things that occur over here there are cystic changes there is disorganization and fraying of the cartilaginous labrum over here and also there will be fibrillation malacia and also balding of the articular cartilage present on the anterior superior part of the acetabulum so this is pretty simple the cam impingement the neck doesn't taper because of which the anterior superior part of the acetabulum with the cartilaginous part and the labrum part gets impinged and creates a problem causing pain right going to the pincer impingement here what happens is there is a greater coverage which can be caused due to excessive retroversion of your acetabulum so your acetabulum is tilted more on a posterior side and what will this do is it will compress the superior part of the labrum over here it was the anterior superior region here it's only the superior part of the labrum this is very analogous to your subacromial impingement that we saw in the shoulder joint okay so in shoulder joint if we if you remember the there is the acromion and on just below the acromion there was the subacromial space right which was getting impinged due to the many reasons over there. So it's very similar to that kind of impingement. Now over here what happens in pincer impingement is when there is repetitive movement of the femur, this repetitive movement can ossify the labrum which is present which will keep getting impinged because of the mechanical blocking, right? This mechanical blocking which occurs during hip flexion will cause ossification of the labrum and the abnormal posterior displacement of the femoral head which will cause your posterior inferior and posterior medial side erosion in the hip joint. So till now what have we seen? We covered the FAI which had two parts. The impingement had two parts. The cam impingement and the pincer impingement. Cam impingement causing because of the failure of the tapering of the neck of the femur whereas your pincer impingement is caused due to over coverage of your head of the femur. The head of the femur is covered too much because maybe of the retroversion or other factors. What happens over here? It causes impingement in the superior anterior region of the acetabulum and cartilaginous and labral structures get affected. Whereas in pincer impingement what is happening? The superior part is getting impinged during flexion due to the mechanical blocking which causes ossification of the labrum and also your abnormal posterior displacement of the head of the femur which will cause posterior inferior 
and also posterior medial side erosion at the hip joint. So talking about the labral pathology, it can be easily divided into cumulative microtrauma that is slowly by slowly labral pathology is created but not in one go whereas direct trauma is a direct sudden impact which causes problem in your labral tissue. So starting with the cumulative trauma, it can be again further divided into over coverage and under coverage. Now what do I mean by this? This is your femur, okay? Then there is a neck and the head, right? And this is your head is covered by your acetabulum, right? It fits into the acetabulum. Now in under coverage, the acetabulum won't cover the whole of your uh, femoral head. So there will be slight coverage of your head of the femur. Whereas in over coverage, there will be too much covering of the head of the femur. Okay. So this is the basic difference. Now under coverage can be caused due to shallow acetabulum. So the acetabulum that I was talking about, it's not deep enough. It's very shallow. So there is not proper coverage. And these dysplastic changes can cause disproportionate loading of the acetabular rim and the labral structure. So because it's hollow, it's not equally distributed. The force won't be equally distributed, which will cause problems. Okay. Whereas in over coverage, what can happen? There will be too much covering, which can happen in your coxa profunda deformity. We just talked about right over coverage and also the acetabular retroversion. We just mentioned. Cool. Now going ahead, the cumulative micro trauma can also be caused due to coxa vera. That is the orientation of your acetabulum. Also reduction in the central edge angle. We all know central edge angle. I wouldn't touch back to the topic because we have covered this in the starting videos. You can go and refer to the beginning of the series of the hip joint and also the functionally acquired laxity or instability at the hip joint in some people can also cause labral pathology. Okay. So these are the reasons for cumulative micro trauma or pathologies that are occurring at the labral joint. Now going to the direct trauma or injuries that we say at the labral tissues. So let's discuss about that. There can be dislocating force on the hip joint as in when you're falling on your knee. So just imagine take Joe over here. If he falls on his knee on his knee straight away, the force will be directly transmitted. So this blunt force to the flexed hip, the hip is slightly flexed, right? Flexed hip will cause posterior dislocation of your femur and will cause injury to the posterior labrum. So this is how posterior labrum can get injured when there is direct blunt trauma. Athletes who change their direction rapidly and have activities like planting and pivoting on the fixed leg are more predisposed to your labral pathologies. Activities like throwing, swinging with hip in hip extension and external rotation plus abduction can cause again lot of labral pathologies. So you take your hip joint, you take it into abduction and external rotation. Okay. And you combine this with extension. This Joe can't do the combination of all these three, but basically abduction, external rotation first, and then combine it with extension and any activity which will involve these motions. The athletes will be more predisposed to hip joint labral pathologies. Okay. So activities like baseball, golf, gymnasts, and also dancers and martial art athletes are very vulnerable to capsular and ligamentous laxity because they have to go to the extreme ranges at the hip joint, right? And also labral injuries. So with that, we finish up the labral pathology topic. So now let's summarize quickly. So under femoroacetabular impingement, we saw cam impingement and pincer impingement. In cam, there is failure in tapering of the neck, which causes superior anterior labral pathologies and also other cartilaginous problems in the hip joint. Whereas in pincer impingement, there is too much coverage of your femoral head, which, which, is which can be caused due to excessive retroversion of the acetabulum. This will cause superior impingement of the labrum which can cause ossification and also posterior displacement of the femoral head which will cause posterior inferior and posterior medial erosion of the acetabulum right then we move on to the labral pathologies where there was micro trauma which can be caused due to under coverage or over coverage of the hip joint 
and then we also saw direct trauma which can be caused in athletes which have external rotation and abduction which is coupled with extension at the hip joint and also in athletes who have rapid change of direction and lot of planting and pivoting movements we also saw that it is very common in sports like baseball golf gymnasts dancers and martial arts because they have extreme ranges of hip joint which can make them vulnerable to capsular and ligamentous laxity and labral injuries right so with that we finish off the topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video